Well, I went from, in my overall life of writing about these topics, I went from being extremely op optimistic to being quite pessimistic. And now I'm back to moderately more optimistic. Are you hopeful that, you know, we as people, as a human society are going to figure this thing out, right? Because we didn't go into the details of what's going on in the world. I didn't think we needed to, you know, I was really trying to, I really wanted to get to some of the core tenets of the levels of development so people can understand. Because for me, it's like getting this out there, understanding that people have more power to wake up and grow up themselves right. is the answer, right? right? As opposed to just having conversations around the politics and the socioeconomic yeah. stuff. Like for me, I'm not saying it's not valid, but for me, giving people the tools to wake up and grow up, which is what I really believe you have. I, I, the, the core of my belief is that this is a tool that we can use to accelerate our growth, right. which if we can do it enough, we'll see some big changes just based on this, on the science of what you're talking about, that, right. you know, this is, this is how we change the systems of the world or they go through these levels and we're already seeing it. It's already there. Right. So let's push the bounds. Let's get this from four to percent to 10% and see what happens. Right. But my question is for you, like, do you, are you hopeful? Are we, you know, because now it's a global thing, right? Like the, the way that we impact the world um, is, is a global thing. How are you feeling? Are you hopeful? Are you seeing some positive signs uh, that, you know, there's some real awareness, you know, happening in some of our cultural systems? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I went from in my overall life of writing about these topics, I went from being extremely op optimistic to being quite pessimistic. And now I'm back to moderately more optimistic. And I'll tell you what they were. When I first got in to this whole growing up aspect of the integral, uh, I was extremely optimistic because I simply thought, well, when anybody sees this, they're going to get it. And therefore, this is going to catch on like crazy. Um, <clears throat> that sort of didn't happen, not in a worldwide scale. Um, I'm very happy, by the way, with the number of individuals that have bought my books or paid attention or whatever. It's actually relatively high. And I'm very encouraged by all of that. It's huge, but, brother. You have a huge impact. You know that. I mean, look at the Matrix movies. You, you narrated the 10 year anniversary of those DVDs. Like, you know, your work, you know, people have to know if you're really hearing Ken for the first time here, this is not just some random stuff. Like, you know, Ken's work is being integrated by governments, you know, huge corporations. It's in entertainment. I mean, it, it, it's foundational, you know, and so it really is impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when it wasn't moving faster at, at early stage, I became rather pessimistic. Um, and I, at that time, I, it also sort of helped me study the actual mechanics of development so I could learn things that would speed them up or help them forward. And then at, the more I studied the actual stages of development, the more I realized sort of some of the real inherent problems that come with nature's evolutionary processes and including our own growing up. And there's some of the things that I've mentioned uh, several times today, like we have to recognize that um, it may be 50% of us is it rational and then 40% is it mythic and 10% is it magic and stuff like that. And so as I started to understand the inherent problems in a growing up scheme and then looked at how humanity was doing, and realized that it was actually doing, if you look at it with a full realistic approach, it's actually doing quite well. And so then I became increasingly optimistic again. And that includes some of the things like you've mentioned about um, even though realistically, the culture has not yet reached 10% at second tier and second tier again, Claire Gray's name that second tier precisely because it's capable of seeing all of our previous perspectives and bringing them together, unifying them into conscious, holistic realities. And he went, wow, I've never seen that. I'm going to start calling all of this shit second tier. And that means everything that we've had up until today is just first tier, even though there are an enormous number of important differences between each of the six stages at first tier. They all just got lumped together because none of them had this overarching holistic capacity that we see in second tier. So um, seeing the actually sort of, in a sense, taking an integral view of integral development, I 
became much more optimistic because even according to that view, um, the integral approach itself has had a relatively large impact. Um, and I, and that's counting the fact that we, it's still, we're still at a culture wars and with the leading edge of our population still at green relativistic, which in the midst of the culture wars has rejected all objective truth and universal realities and all of that. It's just strangled itself with its multicultural diversity um, and without any understanding of how to get that diversity into an overarching unity. Um, and it's gonna have zero chance of reaching that understanding because it denies, it, it confuses all growth hierarchies with dominator hierarchies. And so it won't even study developmental psychology. So that's a- yeah, It's our challenge. It's, our, it's obviously the big challenge. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting to hear you talk about the challenges that we see in the world and the big power structures through the lens and like where it's getting stuck, right? That, that's what I hear from you. Like, and it won't even look at it because right. it doesn't want to, because then the power that it wants so badly will dissolve from the inside out because they'll see that it doesn't really exist. Right. Um, the last question I have for you, Ken, that I'm going to let you go. You touched on third tier, right? Uh, and you, know, you, you touched on third tier. You, you touched third on tier, yeah. the, the developments that are coming. And again, we don't want to yeah. go too deep in that right now, but you're, what you also said in here, I'm just piecing together our conversation, is that you want to be able to look out on the horizon of what's next for you, right? Like, so being aware of where you're at right. in terms of these levels, and we didn't go into states and lines and all that, but just, just on the levels, just being aware of where you're at and starting to understand what's next. Like, what is, what is my growth? And that's what's so cool about this, because you can actually start to look ahead right. of where you're at right now and say, oh, okay, like if I continue to work on myself and grow and have these conversations and meditate, I'm going to be in a situation where I'm going to be thinking about the world this way, right? And I am assuming that's what you're doing when you talk around these levels, these third stages, right. you're out there on the horizon in a sense, right? Like looking at like kind of the cutting edge yeah. of where this is going. Does that get you excited? Like when you get to that place and it got very spiritual, we didn't go there, but it gets yeah. to a very cosmic understanding of where we're at. Um, is that a place that you live in most of the time personally? Yeah, basically. And one of the amazing things about developmental studies is I often see conferences on where are we going? What's next for us? And what almost very few people recognize is that developmental psychology <clears throat> gives us a very good way to tell where the vast majority of human beings today will be tomorrow. And that's because we measure the stages of growth. And we find something as a real stage when essentially every population that is studied or checked goes through these stages. So we also know when we're at the upper limit of our models, when we get to, for example, turquoise, which is at 1.0.5% of the population, what you could say was because everybody who did go up through orange, rational, and green, pluralistic, and teal, holistic, and turquoise integral, the person that had gotten a turquoise integral was demonstrably had gone through all of these stages before they got there. So if you find somebody who's at teal, you could say with a very high degree of certainty, the next place they'll be at is turquoise. Or if somebody's at orange rationality, you could say with an enormous degree of cer certainty, the next stage that you'll be at is green pluralistic. And so at least in terms of those broad understandings of how they're gonna see the world, the value structure they're gonna bring in, the type of truth they're gonna acknowledge, all of those things can, in a broad way, be determined for almost any person alive now. And if you find somebody that's not, that that model is not applying to, it's because they're in third tier and you have sort of no idea how to measure where they're at. 